That damn Cyrus, aka Maleficent, is going for the oval. And we already see, you know, Maleficent got some tricks up her sleeve. And she is trying to slay anybody that, that gets in her way. Let's talk about it. <laughs> Hey, what's up everybody? This is your boy Kenny and welcome to KRS TV. And uh, this is my review for Scandal Season 7, Episode 15. And the name of this episode is The Noise. And let's just say, that damn Cyrus Bean is alpha blood and is alpha power. And nothing is going to stop Maleficent, you know, as far as her mission to get that oval. And she wants it so bad she can taste it. But Olivia is not giving up the fight. So, we literally see from the last episode that Charlie is the one being framed for hijacking Air Force Two. Where we all know Cyrus hijacked his own plane so he can have his presidential moment. So, we see that QPA has been raided. It's been shut down. Um, and then we also see that that damn Charlie's ass is getting beat the hell up. Kind of the same thing that happened to Jake. You know, they put him in the hole. They rough you up and try to get you to take a deal or a confession. That's exactly what's going on to Charlie. They beat Charlie's ass and we see that Lonnie, you know, the guy that actually hijacked the plane. You know, he's now the, um, the head prosecutor for, you know, for the hijacking situation. Because, you know, David Rosen being attorney general, he decided to step down because he was on that plane. But yet, the person that has taken over the investigation is the one who actually did it. And we actually see that he tries to get um, Charlie to sign this deal, confessing to it. But also, within that contract, is saying that Millie was behind it. So, Charlie immediately peeps the bullshit. And he's like, man, I'm not signing this. This is, un this is like unlawful and it's a lie. And he's like, I'm not signing it. We literally see that... Uh, <laughs> You know, Lonnie tries to pressure him that, look, you know, you need to sign this because you may not come back from this because there's no telling how much. Because we see that, yeah, they beat, they were, they were beating Charlie's ass. But Charlie pretty much told Lonnie to go to hell. Then we actually see from the last episode, Quinn, after, you know, QPA was raided, Quinn goes to Olivia, you know, to seek for, to seek her help. She lets them know that they took Charlie you know, um, and, you know, Quinn was like, look, Cyrus ass can have the fucking oval, but he cannot have Charlie. And she said, I'm doing this for Charlie. I'm not doing this for you. And Olivia said, yeah, that's fine. So we see that QPA is now operating out of Fitz's office now because they don't have an office to work out of. We see that, you know, Olivia lets them know what's going on. You know, Fitz is like, you know, I'll talk to Millie about Cyrus. And pretty much they also talked about, you know, Lonnie and his role. Like, you know, what's going on with that? You know, because they know that Lonnie is the one that's the, that's that's actually the head of of um of finding out what happened as far as the hijacking pretty much they decide that look we're gonna look into lonnie and find out what the hell's going on because obviously they all know that cyrus was the one who hacked his own plane and they know that lonnie's one of his operatives so therefore they do a they do an actual expose on lonnie they talk about him and his wife and they also talk about his son adam who was shot and killed you know, but the question is, what what was his motive as to why he was doing this? Is it money troubles? I mean, I mean, what the hell's going on? Because they look at Lonnie's case, he has a clean profile. So what would make him want to work with Cyrus? And what was his what's his motive? You know, behind hij hijacking the plane in the first place. After they meet with all of that, Quinn gets gets word that the baby was sick. So she pretty much um goes you know, goes to check on the baby, gets in the car, and that damn Cyrus Bean is sitting right up in the car, you know, and he pretty much says that, look, so he pretty much lets, lets Quinn know, like, look, <laughs> why don't you help me and get Charlie to take the deal? And, and she's like, I'm not going to get Charlie to do this because Charlie had nothing to do with it. And he's like, oh, here you go. You also still choosing Olivia Pope, you know, you know, it's like you guys are like her wind up toys. And, you know, if anything, you don't, under, un, you don't need to understand within the clause 
is saying that Millie was behind the hijacking and she knew about it. So therefore, we're taking, uh, my mission is to take down Millie. And, it's see, and the thing about it, Olivia is holding on to Millie because of Millie was her gateway into the White House. She was her key to the Oval. And she wants to keep Millie there. And as long as Millie's there, Olivia will always have access to her. So pretty much Cyrus gives her, um, gives Quinn a burner phone and lets her know that, look, you got, you got 24 hours, you know, to let me know whether you're going to help me to get, um, Charlie to take the deal or, you know, I'll just offer my condolences to you and your family. I was like, that damn Maleficent is an evil bitch. I'm like, <laughs> but we know that that's been the fight the whole time. I mean, if you've definitely been watching, you know, season six, we know that Cyrus, as well as Olivia, have both been fighting for that oval. Olivia had Millie, and we saw that Cyrus had Antonio Vargas, and then he pretty much got um, his wife, Luna Vargas. He ended up getting his, he ends up getting a wife you know, to take over the presidency. So Cyrus has been trying to take the over the whole time. And even though he's vice president, he's not satisfied with that shit. So we actually see that finally, you know, Jake, I mean, I'm sorry. We actually see that uh, Fisk goes to meet with um, Millie about it. And of course, Millie ain't trying to hear it. She's like, this sounds like Olivia. You know, it seems to me that Olivia just got you wrapped around her finger. You know, I need evidence and I need proof. And if I don't get any proof, I'm not making a move. So... This goes back and lets them know that. So then Marcus is like, okay, well, I'll try to talk to her. And then we see that Marcus does go to talk to, um, to Millie. And Millie was talking big shit. She was like, why is it that you people keep coming up in here like you salesmen trying to get me to sign on to your plot? Like, do you have proof of this? Do you have proof that any of this is happening? But Marcus lets her know that, look, uh, you know, Cyrus is trying to take down the Oval, and he's literally going to do everything he can to, to shut you down. And she's not trying to believe it or whatever. Well, at first, when, when Fitz told her, she, she didn't believe Fitz, but then she kind of saw how Cyrus was kind of acting as far as his grandeur and his mannerisms when he's talking to the press. He is really giving that presidential hand wave, like, you know... <laughs> Like he's in a damn parade and he's kind of using this platform to set it up. So therefore, when he becomes president, he'll definitely have that, you know, as far as part of his profile. Especially that big, you know, presidential speech he made on Air Force Two. So she's starting to kind of clock it and she tells Jake, you know, you need to get to the bottom of this and, and find out what's going on with Cyrus. But then we see that that damn Cyrus done pulled you know, Jake into his game and was like, you know what? You need to help me to take down Millie because you're always going to be a Second Amendment. You're never going to be number one, just like with Olivia. You were never number one. You were always second to Fitz. And the same thing here. You're always going to be second to Olivia. So why don't you come on the side with me? Yeah, I know you don't like me and you know, and I really don't like you either. And I know you probably got a pair of scissors ready to put them back at my throat like you did a few episodes ago. But look, this is the this is our this is your time to actually win. Because if you help me to do this when I become president, I'll make you a part of my administration. And you'll finally have the power and be number one like you deserve to be. But then he says that um but don't take too long because the offer is only for a limited time only. I'm like what? Like, that damn Cyrus up here giving him, giving him, like, the damn re like, it's McDonald's or Burger King or some shit. It's just a limited time only, so you better act fast. <laughs> yeah, better hurry up. So, we saw all that go down. Then we see that, um, Marcus meets up with, um, Millie, and, she, you know, he's trying to, again, let her know that, look, you need to get behind this. You know, Olivia is not trying to sabotage you. She's trying to protect you, and she's trying to protect your presidency because Cyrus wants the Oval, and he's got forces aligned to take you down. But then he's letting her know that, look, we're in your corner. Olivia's in, a, in your corner. I'm in your corner. I will always be in your corner. And then we see them hold hands, and I'm like, see, that damn love thing between, Cyrus, between um, 
um, Marcus and Millie ain't go no damn way because the next thing you know, we see them up in bed and I'm like, yeah, and I know Marcus was happy that he got his white woman back. So, huh, he, he was definitely getting his life and everything. And then the next thing you know, you know, because while they were in the Oval, you know, getting close with each other, we see that that damn Jake has a camera in the Oval looking at them. So, here it is. He's supposed to be on, on you know, team with Millie. But yet, he done got a damn camera set up in there. To, and he sees that, you know, because we definitely saw a few episodes ago where he was trying to make a move onto Millie. But now he realized that Marcus got her heart. That's the one she's really in love with. So now, this fool pulls a stunt, whereas he pretty much lets... So pretty much what ends up happening, while she's in bed with Marcus, um, her secretary comes and says, you need to report right now. She goes into her office and comes to find out that she's being subpoenaed on the whole hijacking of the plane. And Jake just pretty much is just real shrug and just real blunt, like, hey, you know... I tried to help you, but you didn't want my help. So, um, at the end of the day, um, <laughs> I no longer work for you. Um, I'm, I'm no longer going to be doing intelligence for you anymore. You're on your own. Now, Millie is beginning to see that Olivia was right. That you really right now don't have any allies. And now it's literally like a boys club. They want the oval. And they're ready to ruin you in every way possible to get it. Then we also see that. We also see in this episode that there's this big fight between Millie and Olivia. Because we know Millie is still holding a grudge over the fact that Olivia pretty much was going to have her killed to maintain the Republic. When she was the head of command. And she still is. But, you know, Olivia is trying to gain back that white hat. Because we saw the white hat, you know, in QPA when they did the raid, you know. And we see that Olivia is trying to get that white hat back. She's trying to do things the right way because she wants to protect Millie. But she also wants to protect, you know, she also wants to protect the rights of the people. But we see that um, after, you know, Cyrus to kind of like put it in Millie's, kind of put it in um, Quinn's ear... I meant to say Quinn. Did I, did I, if I said Millie, my mistake. I meant Quinn and um, Quinn and Olivia. We see that you know Quinn, after you know Charlie done put that bug in Quinn's ear that you know you need to try to get me to um, to to get Charlie to sign off on this deal, or we're gonna kill him. So now it's literally Olivia's team um, Millie. Quinn is team Charlie. So, and, and the thing about it, Charlie's the father of her child. So, of course, she ain't gonna want the, the father of her child to, um, to get killed. So, she's like, man, the hell with Millie. Like, look, I'm, I'm here about, you know, making sure that the father of my child comes home. And I'm gonna take the deal. I'm gonna do what I gotta do. And, of course, Olivia is shaking up because Olivia's like, it's about the right... It's like, you're the last person to tell me what the right thing to do. Was it the right thing to do what you did to me when you when I was in your father's basement? So, you are the last person to argue right or wrong. So, we, so of course, we see that Olivia's going through it because she's trying to do the right thing, but she knew she pissed a lot of people off, so everybody's not fucking with her. But we see that Huck realizes that the old Olivia is back. Fitz also notices, too, that, yeah, she's not the same Olivia when she was in the Oval, you know, when she was thirsty for power and thirsty for control. We really see the old Olivia, you know, who ran, you know, OPA. We're seeing that Olivia come back. And she's really trying to stop Cyrus from, from being a bully and stealing the Oval right from under Millie. <coughs> Excuse me. So, we see that, you know, Cyrus... And we see that, I'm sorry, we see that Huck, as well as Fitz, are seeing eye to eye that they, yeah, they notice that the old Olivia is back. Then we see that Quinn and um, Olivia have another moment where they kind of argue it out. And, sh and, like, she admits, like, I'm sorry for what I did to you. I'm sorry for all of this. But I am fighting for what's right. You know, Millie really represents the good. And... I want to make sure that her presidency is protected. I want to make sure that the American people are protected. And then, you know, of course, you know, Quinn is questioning, like, okay, 
I know as far as Millie's standpoint, I understand where you're coming from. But then again, I also understand where Charlie is. That Charlie is not trying to uh, is not trying to um is not trying to back down because he knows that this is wrong and he knows that he's innocent. And I don't want I don't want I don't want Charles Charlie to die. So she gets that burner phone, calls um. You know, call Cyrus and let him know, okay, um, I'm not going to take the deal. I'm not going to make Charlie confess to something he didn't do. And he's like, oh, well, thank you for your call, but um, I really don't need you anymore. But thank you anyway. Goodbye. Just straight shuts her ass down. And that's when he finally got um, Jake on his team. And Jake is really starting to piss me off because Jake is really butthurt because... He is in love with Olivia, but Olivia is in love with Fitz. That's always been his hang-up. But then also, he's mad because he tried to make a move on Millie, but Marcus got there first, and she went all the way. So now, Jake... It's like if Jake ain't got no puss that he's, that he's playing with, he gets in his feelings. I'm like, boo-boo. Like, <laughs> it's, it's crazy, because it's like, you know, if he... I mean, because we definitely know that, you know, Jake loves loves women. And he definitely loves the poo-poo. Especially Olivia's. He definitely loves the, um, he definitely loves the black sugar bowl. Let's call it what it is. So, but the problem is that he's mad when he doesn't get his way out the situation. So now that he tried to make a move on Millie, but Millie up, you know, up one on him. And she got her a black man, you know. He definitely ain't feeling that. So now he's aligned himself with Cyrus. And now he wants to take down Millie. And then we see that, you know, he goes to meet Charlie. Charlie got beat up even more to the point where he is nothing but red. He's he's every color but white. <laughs> you know, I mean, they talk about, I mean, I mean, to tell you the truth, you know, where, where white people say that they're white is kind of funny because, you know, if you hit them. They turn colors, you know, and we've seen that <laughs> that damn Charlie is every color possible. He's red. He's purple. He's black. He's he's it's like he is beat the fuck up, like literally bloody from head to toe. So he was worse off than before. So pretty much uh, <laughs> Jake went at it from a different angle. He's saying that, no, your command. You know, we know what this is. First of all, we know the number one rule is no, is no family. So really, he's letting them know, you're going to sign this um, deal or we're going to kill Quinn. So now, Charlie is now realizing he's being railroaded and there's no way out of it. Because now, Jake is trying to take him down. And then also, we see that David Rosen... Who's pretty much with oh, who's pretty much with QPA and he's finding out all of this stuff about Lonnie, you know, because now because you know Lonnie is now the head prosecutor, but Lonnie's involved, so he goes to talk to Lonnie to find out what the hell is going on, like why are you doing this, you know, I I just want to know what's going on with the case, but then he's like, well, if you, if you know, to be honest with you, I can have you, you know, sanctioned for obstruction of justice. You know, because, you know, you recuse yourself from the case and I don't have to tell you anything. But then he's asking, what is it? What is it with you? What is it that Cyrus got on you? You know, you know, I mean, or is it that you're just has such a taste for high art? Because we know that Cyrus gave that, you know, very expensive painting that he got from Glaxton. He, we know that he gave that to Lonnie. But Lonnie breaks down why he's doing what he's doing. And it's on and it's on some other shit. He breaks down about, you know, there was this crazy lunatic that was buying up all of these guns and ammunitions. So it was cool that they played it off of this whole situation with gun control. Because we know that's one of the biggest issues right now in America. So he pretty much says that this crazy deranged asshole bought all these guns. And that one day I was walking with my son and this crazy man pretty much, you know, did a shootout. And my son was, was shot, you know, twice. And I literally lied to my son that he was going to be okay. And I knew that my son was going to die. And he was saying that, look, Millie has been a great president. She's introduced a lot of great, um, a great, she's, she's introduced a lot of great policies in the Republican Party. But she's just like everybody else. She loves her guns. So Charlie was, you know, was working, 
you know, with Millie during her campaign. So, he's pretty much saying that, look, I got a whole damn case on Charlie. So, there's nothing you can do in regards of trying to sway me from this. So, I'm like, you're pretty much, so pretty much this shit is personal, but it's kind of somewhat psychological because of the fact that your son was shot down. You, you want to go after Millie because, you know... At the end of the day, Millie has her guns and she's going to play, make her moves. And one of her guns was Olivia Pope. But the funny thing about it, you're pretty much, you're pretty much on the team of a sadistic killer like Cyrus Bean. Millie finally gets off of her fucking emotions. She realizes that, one, she does miss Olivia because, you know, Marcus brought that out of her. And then when she realizes she no longer has any more allies, she goes and hunts down Olivia and she says, I need you to be my command. Kill Cyrus Bean. And I was like, yes, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. So now you realize you need Olivia and that you, that at the end of the day, Olivia has always been in your corner. And now she realized that, hey, Jake done turned on her. She realizes that Cyrus is not gonna stop until he becomes president. And now she's being subpoenaed off of a hijacking that she had nothing to do with? Yeah, shit's about to go down. And I'm so here for it. So that's what I have, y'all. If I missed anything, put it down in the comments. I'd love to talk to you about it. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe to my channel. Click that bell so you get notifications every time I drop a video. Also, follow all of the social platforms I have listed in the description box. Also, like this video, comment on this video, and share this video. And I will be back with the next episode of Scandal. So until next time, everybody... Take care. <laughs>